a friend of the family reached out and said they had a relative that was looking to get rid of some old tools. So I made the journey to check these out. And when I got there, I saw these cool hand planes. So I wound up making an offer and buying those. This is kind of where the fun began. I wanted to get a little more detail on these. So I did a little research on this chart made by Wooden Shop. To narrow it down, it said, how many patent dates do you see behind the frog? And the answer on that was a resounding zero. So this leaves it as a type 1 through 8 or a 15 through 20. Then it said, do you see a raised ring surrounding the knob receiver screw hole? The answer on this was no. So that leaves this as a type 1 through 8. It said, do you see a plane size number in the bed? This is a wood transitional plane. I don't think the 31 was the plane size. So the answer on that would be a no. And is the lever cap back recessed or simply flat? I was a little off on this at first, but I think I've narrowed it down now. It is recessed. So that makes it a type three or four. The next thing it asks, is the frog receiver a broad rectangle area with an arched rear toward the tote? The answer on this is yes, there is kind of an arch at the back of this. So hypothetically, this makes this a type four, 1874 to 1884 plane, which is pretty cool that it's still in this shape after all that time. My knowledge on this planer is definitely not firsthand. It's just really boiled down to some random internet searches and digging through other people's documents to see what they have documented on old Stanleys. So if anybody watching this knows anything that I've missed or sees anything that I missed, please comment and let me know. Here I just put a little degreaser on a rag to try to clean off some of the dirt and stuff. This thing had been sitting out in a garage and it had no doors or anything, so it was exposed to the elements, dirt, dust, and everything. I filled a Tupperware container full of vinegar and salt I had read this was supposed to be pretty good at loosening rust, so definitely the easier the better. It did pretty well. In hindsight, this thing was pretty far gone on a few pieces, even though it wasn't really pitted bad. It just had a lot of rust on it, so probably me buying some kind of actual rust remover would have been better for this, but at this point, I was already committed. You could definitely tell this planer had been used a lot. The iron had a weird grind to it and had a few pits on it, so I knew I'd have to do a little more work on it. As far as the chip breaker, it was in pretty good all-around shape. I mainly just had to clean the surface rust off of it. I moved on to cleaning some of the painted parts or at least originally I thought were painted. So when I was doing a little research, I found out that there was this technique called Japanning back in the day where they used this kind of asphalt conglomerate to put on these. So luckily these were still in pretty good shape. I basically just cleaned them up and put them aside. As for the brass parts on this, I just used a small brass bristle toothbrush and some 4-0 steel wool and even some like thousand grit sandpaper that I used on one of the round pieces. I 
wasn't trying to get these to a polish. I really just wanted to clean them up a bit. When I got to the body of this thing, I didn't want to take too much off of it. I kind of wanted to leave its character from all its use and its lifespan. So I basically just taped some sandpaper to a piece of glass and then rubbed it on there until it was perfectly flat. Took some other light grit sandpaper and went over it to knock the finish down. And then after doing some research, I found that a lot of these were likely amber shellac. So went and got some amber shellac, put a nice coat on it. It really matched up nicely with the original coat that I could see under the handle. For the knob and the tote, I just used some fine grit sandpaper on it too. Really just needed to rough it up enough so it would take the finish right. As for the tote handle, it's actually broken on the top. I was going to replace it or just glue a piece to it, but it's really not broken enough where it affects the usage of it. So I think I'm just going to leave it for now. If I want to change it later, I can make a new one or something. Once everything was finished up, it was time to reassemble it. I think the dark metal looked good against the amber finish on this. As you can see here, the iron is a little out of whack, so I figured it was time to take this down and start back from scratch. I figured the easiest way to do this was take it over to the electric sander and let it go to work getting it flat again. Once it was flat again, I could go through the normal steps of sharpening these. Please note, I am pretty new to sharpening these, and I have yet to graduate from YouTube University on the full process of this. I'm pretty close now. I can get them sharp enough that they'll really dial off the wood and thin, nice, 
curly Q layers. So I think that's the end goal really. After I got most of the body assembled, I just went ahead and made a pre-alignment on the bottom there on the blade just so that it would be a little easier to adjust once I got everything in place. Once I got to this part, I got so excited that I did what any noob hand plane restorer would do. I forgot to put the screw in between the chip breaker and the iron. It was working well, but there was just something a little bit off. And once I figured it out, of course, after I did this testing and it's chipping nicely, so I'm excited, but I'm still wondering what is going on here. So yeah, after that, I take it back apart and fix my problem. Here I am doing what I should have done in the first place and that's put all the parts on it. Duh. All in all, this was a really fun project. Not just for the plane itself, but also for the history of the thing. It's kind of cool to think that this tool is probably over 130 years old and still being used. Appreciate you watching the video, and if you made it this far, like and subscribe. Appreciate you watching the video. I hate the echo.